Hi everyone. So today we're going to be delving into a topic that is essential for ensuring workplace success. How do you drive innovation, creativity, and change among your workforce? In an ever-changing business landscape, innovation is not optional. It is imperative for success. So what are some steps that you and your team can take to ensure that you achieve this? Well, one of the first things you can do is to understand your personal and team dynamics. So this is when professional assessments like a DISC assessment comes into play. It can be a super helpful tool to do formal personality tests, work style tests. DISC is just one of the great options, but it essentially puts people in four different categories. Those who are dominant, influential, conscientious, or steady. Now, as someone who falls into the more conscientious spectrum, knowing this makes me more self-aware of my own work habits and how I may interact with others. Ideally, I'm able to leverage this to support my team and also better understand where they're coming from. Now, identifying how you work and how your team works is also really essential to aligning people to the proper roles that they're going to thrive in. Now, this is something that I think as a leader is a privilege to do, but you also want to make sure that you're doing well so that you don't have that team member who is maybe stuck in a more mathematical role when they should be in a more analytical one. Now, I think that this is something that helps you put people in the right place, but also maybe if they need to go and be encouraged to say, move on to a new type of role or task, you know where they are and maybe where they're able to go. So again, understanding your team, maybe through assessments or maybe just spending some more one-on-one -on -one time with them is really crucial to creating connections with them and also just understanding your team as people. There's a really great biblical example of this when thinking about Gideon and how he was initially assigned to, you know, this leadership role, but had some doubt and maybe some reservations about whether or not he was the one to be qualified for that. But with some more, I guess, divine leadership involved, um, he was encouraged to step into a new leadership role and was able to lead the Israelites to a very imperative victory. Now, this again is on a far different biblical scale than modern day, but I think the concept still stands the test of time is that if the person who is chosen for a leadership role is known, the person who is choosing them and helping them into a new area of work will be able to give them the right tools along the way and also know that they're the person for the job. Another really important part of driving innovation and creativity in the workplace is how we perceive failure. Now, we want to draw some insights here from a Stanford School of Business article back in 2012, where basically researchers found that there can be two types of categories people fall in when they come into perceiving failure. So they deemed type one as people who deemed failure as shameful. It was something really bad. It was to be avoided kind of really at all costs. And then there's another category which has the type two mindset. And this is people who see failure as this beautiful opportunity for success. Yes, you may not have gotten something right on a first try, but that really isn't the point. The point is you learned something new, which is maybe the most important thing of all, because that's going to help us keep trying again, trying again. It really drives um, the ability to work on basically the prototypes of things where you're not seeing, seeing your own failures again as the end of things, but rather as a springboard into something new. I think a really good biblical example of this is the story of Peter. Now, when I think about his um, moments where he was denying Jesus, you know, people can see that as, oh, that, that was such a, a failure on his part. That was, you know, such a mistake. And, you know, it ended up being a really integral part of his personal growth journey and understanding himself more, understanding his role within the community, how he would support his mission and the work of Jesus. And uh, really showcase that, 
you know, even our smaller personal failures can be catalysts for growth and innovation and ways to do something better. I think his example definitely aligns with a more, again, type two mindset, which emphasizes that failure is a step towards improvement. By understanding that failure is actually something we can leverage, this helps us to expand into growth without fear of making a mistake or, you know, stepping into uncharted territories in a nervous way. It's something that can help us really springboard into change in a positive light. So as leaders, it's really crucial to forecast how we're going to apply this newfound knowledge. It's really good to be able to anticipate some future challenges you might run across and leverage these leadership insights to see how we're going to be proactive and strategic leaders. So in my world of data analytics, I've learned a lot about patterns and, you know, making good decisions and hopefully I'm able to leverage my insights to drive success. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's also not just the numbers and patterns of things. It's my mindset. It's my emotional intelligence and how I approach my problems, both personally and with a team. As I transition into a sales job this January, I also see a direct correlation between the content in this presentation and what I'm going to be doing there. So as I engage with people, say, in um, the, the building I'm working in with, you know, clients who are there, who I might be speaking with, with my own team, I know I'm definitely going to be encountering people from, you know, various backgrounds, uh, various ways of thinking, again, going back to my own DISC assessment, you know, that's something I can use to help understand my own teammates and how we may, you know, sell to other people, but also the clients that I'm going to be speaking with, you know, understanding myself and others better really helps to be able to create strong connections uh, and also just helps to uh, inspire, I guess, our own personal success because I'm able to know you know, the ways in which I work best and the ways I can support my team. I would also say, in addition to communication, this is something that also helps to foster a collaborative environment because, again, you're able to lift up other people, identify their needs. I would say just like in the biblical examples we've explored, I would aim to lead with purpose and understand that I may be, you know, achieving my own goals, but it also, again, takes a village from my own team members and also the clients who are giving me their support. As we navigate the ever-evolving landscape of our professional journeys, whether in business analytics and sales or anything else, it's important to remember that quality and purposeful leadership is a universal language that helps drive innovation and change.